oh, what's about to happen here is just straight up awesome, pure math. In this video, we're going to go over why the Euler's method formula works the way it does. Like, why is that formula there, right? Why does it work the way that it does? So let's break it down to understand what we're doing and why this formula gets us what we're doing. So Euler's method allows us to approximate values on a curve that we don't know what it looks like or what the function even is. But we're given that curve's derivative. And so what we can do is we use the tangent line at a point that we are given is on this curve right here. And we go out to that tangent line however far. Right, so we go out to that point and we essentially do a tangent line approximation. Okay, well let's talk about how we get to that point. Well, this value right here is delta x. Right? That's the distance that we go from this value to that value. So let's call this value now x1 comma y1. That's like your first approximation. Well, how do you get to x1? Well, x1 is very simply just this plus delta x. And then what's the change in y here? So this right here is the change in y that we're getting. Right? It's not the true change in y. It's actually more of what we would call, I guess, dy, right? But it's that change in y. Well, how do we get a change in y? Well, if you think about it, you take the change in x, right, whatever that is, and if I multiply that by the slope, right, or if I take change in x and I multiply that by dy dx, hmm, we're left with delta x and dx basically being the same thing and dividing out. And it's like you're doing the rate times the amount of time that you're traveling, and that gives you the displacement, which is dy. Hmm. So now we're seeing how that multiplying the slope by delta x works to get us to the amount of change. So that's approximately the change in y. Well, if I add the change in y, this amount, onto where I started, ooh, I'm going to end up where I finish, right? The starting point plus how much I change equals my finishing point. And that's exactly what's happening here, right? You've got your finishing value, the approximation. We'll call that y1 now. And that's approximately equal to where I'm starting plus this thing right here is dy dx. And delta x may as well be dx. So if I divide out those dx's, it's like, again, I've got the rate times the time I've been traveling. And so what you're essentially doing is you've got y sub 0, where you start, plus dy is approximately going to be the y value on the curve. Now, dy is not the actual delta y. Actual delta y is this change from this point to the point on the curve. But it's a decent approximation. So that's what we're approximating. That's the key idea there, that dy dx times dx is approximately delta y. It's not exactly it. And so if I add the change in y onto the original value, I'll get the exact value. Well, we don't have the exact change in y, we just have an approximation. Okay, so how does that tie into like point-slope form? Let me show you this. This is mind-blowing. So point-slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. All right. Well, in our case, m is dy dx. And x minus x1, that's a change in x. That's literally this minus that. That's your delta x. Oh, look what's happening here. And that's equal to y minus, now y1 in this case is the point that we started at, y0. If you solve for the y value, what you end up with is that y is equal to y sub 0 plus dy dx times delta x. That is how you get a tangent line approximation. And that's all we're doing. We're saying, hey, Give me that tangent line approximation. Then we're going to assume that this point is now on the curve. Give me another tangent line approximation. Give me another tangent line approximation. We end up tracing out the curve pretty closely. The wider the delta x, the farther off from the curve we're going to be and the more error there will be. Isn't that cool? So it does connect to our point slope form. And that gives you a little insight into why Euler's method works the way that it does and why the formula makes sense. Even if you're looking at this and you're like, you know what? I have no idea. I'm just going to go with the, the method. That's fine. But take a little bit more time. Try to see how this connects with your tangent line equations, and you might be pleasantly surprised. See you next time. Peace.